Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, at a subcommittee hearing a few weeks ago, I noted that high-frequency trading isn't really trading in the traditional sense. While regular traders have days when they make money and days when they lose money, high-frequency traders almost never lose money. In its recent IPO filing, the high-frequency trading firm Virtue uh, disclosed that in its 1,238 trading days, it had made money on 1,237 of those days. That means that in nearly five years of trading, the company had come out ahead on its trades every single day save one. Now, that's not trading. High-frequency traders aren't making money by taking on risk. They're making money by effectively charging a small fee to investors on millions of transactions. And in that circumstance, the question is whether they're providing a valuable service in return for that fee, or they're just skimming money off the top of these trades. So at a prior hearing, I asked Andrew Brooks, the head of equity trading for T. Rowe Price, and Jeffrey Solomon, CEO of the investment bank Cowan & Company, a simple question. Does high-frequency trading provide any valuable service in exchange for the money it sucked out of the markets? And they both said no. In particular, they disputed the often repeated claim that high-frequency trading is valuable because it provides liquidity to the market. So I want to push on the liquidity question since they had, had rightly raised it. Mr. Griffin, your companies run a fund for several years called the Tactical Trading Fund. And this fund relies primarily on high-frequency trading strategies, and it's been very profitable. Just for context, can you tell me what the average holding period for securities is in that fund? So, Senator Warren, uh, I'm not sure the source of the information that you have in our tactical fund, but our tactical fund's largest source of profitability, to the best of my recollection, over the last several years has been from fundamental equity long-short trading. So you're saying you don't do high-frequency trading? No, I'm not. I'm saying that within our tactical fund... Well, do you have a, a fund that does high-frequency trading? Uh, the tactical fund conducts high-frequency trading, but conducts it along with a variety of other trading activities. So you say it's just a mixed fund at this point, and it was never a high-frequency trading fund, primarily or exclusively? Starting from roughly January 1st, 2009, uh -huh. it has been a mixed fund with equities being the single largest allocation of risk capital. Equities so, trading through. All right, so let me ask the question a different way, and I'll, I'll just ask Mr. Uh, uh, Cronin about this question. At an earlier hearing, Mr. Brooks, the head of trading at T. Rowe Price, said their average hold time was about three years. So my question is, what's the average hold time for a high-frequency trading fund, Mr. Cronin? I, I don't have personal knowledge, but I know it's one heck of a lot less than three years. Right, under a month? Uh, uh, under a month, probably. Under a under, day? Under a minute. Uh, under a minute. In a minute second. Okay. Minute yes. Okay. So I want to ask the question then about liquidity. If you're buying a stock and turning it around and selling it within a minute, within a second, later to someone else, how does that provide liquidity to the markets? Couldn't the original seller have just sold the stock to the ultimate buyer one minute later? We are worried about excessive intermediation in the markets. Uh, we're also worried that we're probably all not in a great position to truly understand all of the HFT activities that take place. It might be easy for me to say that some of it's good and some of it's bad. I think we shouldn't be in the business of conjecture. We should be in the business of data. We recommend that there be a specific regulatory regime that's in charge of high-frequency trading so that we can all be better informed. Well, if Mr. Cronin, I, I, I appreciate that, and I appreciate that you want to see more regulation here, and that's something we certainly should talk about. But I at least want to ask the question, how it is that the, this is the principal claim for high-frequency trading is that it provides liquidity in the marketplace. And all I'm saying is it takes place in a very short space where someone jumps in ahead of a trade and buys and then turns around and sells. And I'm trying to figure out how that adds more liquidity to a market if that seller would have found that buyer, only found them a nanosecond later or two seconds later. Senator, so that's why we make a distinction between trading volume, which is exactly what you described, and real liquidity. 
Liquidity provision is a far, far different concept, and that's what we are trying to protect and promote. But some of these high-frequency trading strategies are inconsistent with that. All right. I'm out of time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure.